All right, this can be page one of notes two of Calc C. And what we're going to talk about are Taylor polynomials. So Taylor polynomials are more than tangent lines, right? So if you have a function, you know you can find uh, the value of the function, the value of the derivative, and then you can uh, write a tangent line. And you know that the tangent line is going to give you a really good approximation of the function when you're very close to the point of tangency. But then you start running into a problem. So the problem that you run into is that most functions curve, right? They have some concavity to them or whatever you want to say. So, you know, we'll start with like, oh, you're not a pen. Uh, we'll start with this function, right? And we'll write our tangent line. And maybe I'll use a different color for the tangent line. Let's see. So we'll have our tangent line like this. And it's fine. It does an okay job. But the problem is because the, the function is curving, it bends away from the tangent line. Well, what if instead of just tangent line, what if we had uh, like a quadratic that fit this thing, right? So a quadratic might do this, something of this variety, right? Where it, it's better for a little bit longer. Well, what if we had a cubic? Maybe it'd be better for longer. Uh, a fourth degree, could it be better for longer? Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about here is like, can we do better than tangent lines? I think we can. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to give them to you at this point so we can get a sense of like what's happening and are they good and all of that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in these tables. We're going to use a calculator to fill in like basically all of it. So I'm going to show you a, a kind of neat way that you can make your calculator spit out a lot of values at once. Um, the first thing that we need to know, though, that you're probably unfamiliar with because it's never really come up before this, uh, the zeroth derivative. So the zeroth derivative of f of x is f of x. It's just the original function, right? So when a problem tells you the zeroth derivative or to find the zeroth derivative, it's just telling you find the value of the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the calculator, and I'm going to try to do this. So what we're finding is we have um, f of x, I'm going to define that. We have t of x, which is Taylor polynomial. I'm going to define that. Notice, though, this Taylor polynomial, whatever a Taylor polynomial is, is the tangent line. Um, if we find the derivative, we find the value of the function, we'll find out that this is the tangent line. So a tangent line is some sort of Taylor polynomial. It's actually the first degree Taylor polynomial is a tangent line. You got to remember that. That's like a real, it's one of those weird facts that's like very basic but somehow people miss it. Um, you've been writing Taylor polynomials for ages, but they've all been first degree. First degree Taylor polynomial. Value of the function and the value of the tangent line are the same at the point of tangency. Slope of the function, slope of the tangent line are the same at the point of tangency. Or we're gonna change from point of tangency to center. So at the center, the value of the function, the value of the derivative are the same. The center is the point of tangency. So what we're gonna do, is uh, figure out the nth derivative for zero and one. So the value of the function, the value of the first derivative, compare those um, at specifically one. Where is one coming from? It's the point of tangency. You can kind of tell that from the tangent line written in point slope form, part of why it's so important for us. And then we're just gonna compare some values. So we're gonna do it all on the calculator. I just want you to know like what I'm doing on the calculator. And then as I do it on the calculator, I'll probably fill it in, then I'll come back and just like show you what I wrote. So uh, here we go over the calculator. And I'm gonna try to do this in like a weirdly efficient way. So uh, first, let's define f of x, which is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5x plus 8. And then t of x, our Taylor polynomial, which is also our tangent line in this case, is 7 plus 4, the quantity x minus 1. Calculator is going to expand that. All right, I'm going to create a thing. I'm just going to call it a as a function of n. And what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to put these in a list. So control and then close parentheses. And then I'm going to go over to the templates to the nth derivative template. And I want the derivative with respect to x, uh, n. So the nth derivative. So a, a of 1 will find the first derivative of uh, the functions. And then comma. And then do the same thing again. Um, and we're going to do it for t of x. So I'm setting this up so that I can just like do this. So if I find a of zero, the zeroth derivative, it's such a common con, the calculator knows it. 
So there it is. It expanded the um, tangent line, but like that's exactly what we gave it. So a of one is the derivatives, a of two, second derivatives, a of, uh, a of three is the third derivatives and so on. So, and after that, they're gonna be zero forever because um, you know, our tangent line got there on the second derivative because the concavity of a line is zero. And then uh, we have third degree thing. So the fourth derivative will be zero and then forever after, whatever. Um, all right, so we want to compare um, the values of the original functions, which are, there's just a little bird on my screen. So, so loud. Okay, um, a of zero. So a of zero is the original functions, the zeroth derivatives. And we want to know those values at x equals one. So I'm writing these down. So they're both seven, which I was expecting because um, it's a tangent line, right? We kind of know what's going to happen here. I'm going to find a of one, the first derivative of each function, and I want to evaluate those at one. I get four for both of those. So the value of the functions are the same. Values of the derivative are the same. Now let's see if we can compare them. So I'm going to do a zero. So these are the original functions, right? And you press enter if you need to. Uh, I want to do these such that x equals 0.9. So I get for the function, I get 6.659. For the tangent line, I get 6.6. .6. I guess zero, zero. Um, and they're, they're really close, right? And 0.9 is really close to the point of tangency, so that kind of makes sense. One. So you want to start calling the point of tangency the center, though. Um, and I know that I'm being inconsistent in that as well. 7.461. And then 7.4. I'm right, zero, zero. And then I need 1.2. So those are like, that's a little worse, um, which like maybe makes sense based on the shape. So the tangent line, you know, it peels away. So uh, no way to know. And then here, 8.2. 048 versus 7.800. Um, all right. What I'm going to do is look at a graph and just see like where are these values coming from. Like the shape is really determining this. So I'm going to insert a graph page. And then if I just press var, um, I have the function. So I'm going to graph f of x. And then I'm going to graph, uh, press var, I'm going to graph t of x. And then ideally, I would see uh, the point of tangency and all that. So I'm going to zoom out, out. So like seeing graphically, I don't know if you can hear the kids who are just like going crazy outside. I, I, my neighbor recently got a swimming pool, and I feel like that's probably related to that. Uh, I'm going to zoom box. OK, so you can see that the value of the tangent line and the function are really, really close. This is the first degree Taylor polynomial, really, really close to the point of tangency. Let me just trace to that. Um, trace to, you know what I really want to do is trace all, I think, which I never use, but this, this should work. So one, they're both the same. At uh, point 0.9, you can see the difference a little bit, but not really. 1.1, uh, you can see a little bit, but not really. Uh, 1.2, you can see they're starting to peel apart um, and the curve is is above, right, because of the concavity. Um, but this is just the general idea. So I'm going to go back to the notes uh, and take a look at what I wrote. Then I'm going to come back uh, here again, I think, and do the next one in this also. But it's all set up, so like we can just change a few things, and it'll work, hopefully. That's the dream, at least. So these are the values that I filled in. We looked at the graphs, and you can see like it's pretty valid. Um, so this next problem. We have a fourth degree polynomial and we have a quadratic, right? So this is the second degree Taylor polynomial. Now, where is the center? So because of these X minus ones that you see, that is, I was about to use a gross color. Because of the X minus ones that you see, the center here is at X equals one, right? So it's the quantity X minus the center. So if you see X plus three, it's the quantity x minus negative three, the center is at negative three. So we have these, and what I'm claiming is that the value of the function, the derivative, and the second derivative should match at the center, so at one. And then I think that this will do a pretty good job because, um, well, there's no guarantee of that. I just think it will. It'll, it should do better 
than the tangent line for a longer period of time because a quadratic can curve with the function as opposed to a tangent line, which is just a line. So cannot do that. Um, so let's see. So here we go. I should be able to just, uh, well, I think, update f of x, 3x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared. So this is why you want to like really know how to use your calculator. So you can do these sorts of things. And then uh, t of x. A of x should be fine. Like I should be able to, I think, just use it. So 9x minus 1, oh, quantity x minus 1 plus 16 quantity x minus 1 squared. So you'll notice when these are written, they're written in powers of x minus the center to, to some power, right? Powers of x minus the center. And then so uh, a of 0 should give me these, except it's going to expand t of x, which is like super annoying, but nothing we can do about it. All right, so I'm not really interested in that. What I'm interested in is a of zero when x equals the center, which is one. Um, and I want uh, a of one, so the first derivatives when x equals one. And a of two, the second derivatives when x equals one. And now there is no guarantee that at the third derivative they'll be equal because we only have a second degree Taylor polynomial. So, and they're not. Um, if it was a third degree Taylor polynomial, it would have to give you 60 because the third derivative of the original function gives you 60 and they have to give you the exact same values. So I'm going to fill these in. So it's uh, three and three and then nine and nine and then 32 and 32. So you can see, I mean, we're getting the same things and that's going to happen. I mean, that's the property that they have. It's just like taking the idea of a tangent line and expanding it. So tangent line, the function, and the derivative are equal at the center. Uh, you know, the second degree thing, the function, the first derivative, the second derivative will be equal at the center. Tenth degree, it's like the function, the first through tenth derivatives will be equal at the center. And then after that, there's, there's nothing really guaranteed. Um, so what I'm going to do is graph this. Actually, it should be graphed already because I updated um, f and t. So if I change this to 1, uh, I get three, which is what I had gotten. So I'm going to put in 0. 0.9 and see. Uh, so 0. 0.9. You know, I don't, I don't know if I'm doing this in the right place. I'm going to do this here. So I get uh, 2.250 versus 2.26, like pretty close. Um, and then I'm going to make it 1.1. So I guess I'm just getting these off of here. Uh, 4.070 versus. 4.060, I guess. Uh, I'm a little nervous about the third decimal on these. The red one is never giving me three decimals. I don't exactly know why, but the blue one is. And so I feel like the red one would if it had that many decimals to give. So 5.525. And then uh, one, nope, 5.44. I'm going to go with a zero at the end of that. So you can see, like, pretty close, like, not that bad. Um, let me just. Let's do, uh, let's do like a, uh, so I have to do a of zero because I'm taking the actual values of them at x equals uh, 0.9, just to like make sure that was working. And then 1.1, yep, 1.2. Okay, so I mean, it was giving us the values we were supposed to get, uh, just, you know, a little weird maybe because of the decimals. I'm just, I'm weirded out because all of those are, are two decimal places. It doesn't matter, it's totally fine. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to the notes and show it to you, and then I think I'll come back in the next video and do the rest of this page, because I don't want this to be like an infinitely long video, and this is, this is a pretty good amount to like get your head around. So uh, there's more to life than tangent lines. We can do better, right? Tangent lines don't bend, so they're guaranteed to be wrong pretty quickly if they're approximating a curve that bends. So based on that, uh, we're going to develop this idea. I'll be back uh, in the next video to finish this page, and I will see you there.